Swift's classes work a bit like signposts. Every copy of a class instance is actually a signpost pointing to the same piece of underlying data. This mostly matters because changing one copy will automatically change the other copies too. But it also affects the way we handle variables stored inside classes. This one simple code example shows how things work. We have a class user with a variable property called name equal to Paul. We then make a user, let user equals user. Once that's done, we'll say user.name equals Taylor and print user.name. And that code's fine. But we're changing the constant. And that's bad, right? We shouldn't change constants. Except we aren't changing the constant value at all. Yes, the data inside the class has changed, but the actual class instance itself, the object we created has not changed. And in fact, can't be changed because we made it a constant. Think of it like this. We had some data, a person with the name Paul, and we created a constant sign pointing at that person. Over there is Paul. But we scribbled out a person's name on the name tag and wrote a new one in, Taylor. The user in question hasn't changed. It's the same person, we just changed their name tag and the sign still points in their direction. Now, if we'd made the name property a constant, then it couldn't be changed. No matter what way we make the, the class, sorry, it wouldn't change. We have a constant signpost pointing to a constant user property, a name, it wouldn't change. We've written the name in, in permanent ink, for example. In contrast, what if we made the name a variable and also made the user instance a variable as well. Well, now we can do this, flip it and say, point somewhere else, point to a wholly different user or change the user internally and stay pointed at the same user. We can do both, change a name or change to a wholly new user. Try it with some code next code. We could say there's a class called user with a name equal to Paul, we'll then have var user equal to user, user.name equals Taylor. And now we'll change the actual whole instance of our user. We'll say user equals a wholly new user. And now print user.name. And when that code runs, it's gonna print out Paul. So even though we changed the name to Taylor, we then overwrote the whole object with a new one. We moved the signpost, pointing it somewhere else. And that wouldn't be possible if we had made this as a constant. That's the difference. We've now got a constant signpost. We cannot point it somewhere else. The final variation, of course, is having a, a variable instance and constant properties, which means we can create a new user if we wanted to, say, change a new one over here, a new one over here, da da da. But once that's done, we can't change its internal values. And so we end up with four possible situations. A constant class with constant property, a constant class with a variable property, a variable class with constant properties, and a variable class with variable properties. And each of these work subtly differently. If we have a constant class with a constant property, it's a signpost that's fixed, it's constant, always pointing to the same user who always has the same name. It can't change who it pointed to or what their name is. It's all constant. If we have a constant class with a variable property, again, the signpost is fixed, pointing to the same user, but they can change their name. Then we have a variable class with a constant property. The signpost can move around, point to this person, point to that person, and so forth, but their names never change. And finally, a variable class with variable properties. The signpost can move to different users and those users can all change their names. And that might seem awfully confusing and perhaps even pedantic. However, it does serve an important purpose because of the way class data gets shared. Now let's say uh, you've been given a user instance. 
and your instance is constant. Here you go, it's fixed. But the property inside there, that's variable. This tells you at a glance, you can change that property if you want to, yes. But more importantly tells you, it's possible that property's changed elsewhere. Because your copy of the thing might be held elsewhere and be modified elsewhere, and that value can change. It's possible that value might change somewhere else without you even realizing. And some other code could just change it by surprise. But you know it's variable, so you can plan ahead. It doesn't matter that your copy of the whole instance is constant, that just means you can't change the instance as a different instance, but the properties inside are variable still. So when you see constant properties, it means you can be sure neither the current code nor any other part of your program can change things by surprise. It isn't gonna happen. But as soon as you have variable properties, regardless of whether the instance itself is a variable or a constant, it opens up possibility that your data can be changed by surprise. You can just pull that under your feet. Now this is different from structs, because constant structs cannot have their properties change, even if you make the properties inside variable. Hopefully, you can now see why that is. A struct holds all its data directly inside itself. Some int properties, a boolean property, a string, an array of strings, whatever, they're all held directly inside the struct. So if you try and change a value inside the struct, you're also implicitly changing the whole struct. The whole thing must have changed, which is not possible because it's constant. Whereas classes, they are referring to some other data. And that can change freely without the class changing. That's what's happening here. Now, one upside to all this is that classes don't need to have the mutating keyword with methods that change their data. This keyword is really important for structs because constant structs cannot have their properties changed. Doesn't matter variable or not, if the struct itself is constant, it cannot be changed. And so Swift has to see us calling a mutating method and go, aha, you're calling this thing on a constant, not allowed. With classes, how the instance itself was made no longer matters. The only thing that determines whether a property can be modified or not is whether the property itself is constant or variable. And Swift can see that for itself just by looking at how you mark the things up in your code. So there's no more need to mark the methods, especially with mutating. 